the entire country watched as Oscar Pistorius and Reva's WhatsApp messages were read to each other. And many people have commented that there seem to be strains of emotional abuse coming through. Could you talk us through that from a criminologist's perspective? All right. I think one of the WhatsApps were very telling. That was the one where Reva mentioned that she was scared of him and she was really angry because she had to leave a party early because he was having tantrums. And um, let me just take one step backwards and talk about, you know, possible but generally, all right, because we don't know the outcome of, of, of um, Oscar's case and we cannot label him either way, all right, as a, a self-defendant or as a murderer. We can't, we can't do that. So let's look broadly. Now, basically, acts of aggression in the past tend to escalate. With, with certain offenders, all right? And to, to, to put it basically, there's always a history. If one looks at, at where Oscar's sitting in the dock today, it's not his first act of aggression, all right? There is always a history. Not where he's actually killed somebody, but other incidents, all right? And, and, and this history, in a lot of cases, ultimately culminates in a crime like murder primarily because it's never been punished, all right? And as, as a part of this aggressive behavior, there are elements of abuse. And I think that came out quite strongly in that WhatsApp. And let's just look at emotional abuse broadly. What, what causes emotional abuse? It's usually um, individual characteristics, such as low self-esteem, such as jealousy, um, inadequacy, insecurity, um, feelings of, of, of not being understood, of being a victim. All right, so those are characteristics that the, that the individual is carrying around with them. And in order to, to mask those almost, the behavior becomes more egotistical, more arrogant. Um, it becomes very controlling. And of course, it, it, it can become aggressive. So those are your, your primary causes of, of emotional abuse amongst others. Now, abuse generally has a very specific cycle. Uh, your first step is, is the, the build-up, the tension build-up phase in the abuser. All right, so, so basically what happens is there are all these irritants out there and he is busy working himself, he or she are busy working themselves up against these irritants. And the, the potential victim is doing everything in his or her power to try and remove these irritants because they, they know what's coming, all right? So the next step is the explosion, okay? The, the um, abuser will eventually, ultimately, inevitably explode. And in the case of emotional and psychological abuse, that explosion culminates in belittling the victim in trying to destroy the self self confidence, in um, insulting her in public, and just just really making her him or her feel really small. And then the third um, aspect of abuse is, is is what they call the honeymoon period. Um, afterwards, the abuser realizes, oops, and the victim will say, "Look, I don't like the way you're treating me," and they will say, "I'm terribly sorry. I won't do it again." But inevitably down the line, that cycle does get repeated because that is innate in that individual. So now the defense, as you probably heard, um, the, the um, prosecution was saying, yeah, but you know, the, if, look at their relationship. This was abusive. This, you know, how could this be? They only been together a few months. This is, it, it was not a happy relationship. Now they, the, the, the defense is going to come along and say, but hang on, you have only selected a couple of WhatsApps or emails or SMSs of this kind of nature. Look here, others, which shows that there, there's, there's this loving relationship. But that is ultimately the cycle of abuse. It's, it's the loving ones could, yes, they could be after a long period of normalcy, or they could be the honeymoon period. So these are all very important factors from a different point of view to, to consider.